Rio Grande do Sul, Rio Grande do Sul, UK, US, Portuguese, Rai, you grads, I do so listen. Lit. Great River of the South is a state in the southern region of Brazil. It is the fifth most populous state and the ninth largest by area. Located in the southernmost part of the country, Rio Grande do Sul is bordered clockwise by Santa Catarina, to the north and northeast, the Atlantic Ocean to the east, the Uruguayan departments of Racha, train to Y Tres, Cerro Largo, Rivera and Artigas to the south and southwest, and the Argentine provinces of Corrientes and Messianes to the west and northwest. The capital and largest city is Porto Alegre. The state has the highest life expectancy in Brazil, and the crime rate is relatively low compared to the Brazilian national average. Despite the high standard of living, unemployment is still high in the state as of 2017. The state has 5.4% of the Brazilian population, and it is responsible for 6.6% .6 of the Brazilian GDP. The state shares a gaucho culture with its neighbors Argentina and Uruguay. Before the arrival of Portuguese and Spanish settlers, it was inhabited mostly by the Guarani and Kangyang peoples, with smaller populations of Chauyua and Minuano. The first Europeans, there were Jesuits, followed by settlers from the Azores. In the 19th century, it was the scene of conflicts including the Ferropilter Revolution and the Paraguayan War. Large waves of German and Italian migration have shaped the state as well. Geography, geography, geography. Rio Grande do Sul is bordered to the northeast by the Brazilian state of Santa Catarina, to the southeast by the Atlantic Ocean, on the southwest by Uruguay, and to the northwest by the Argentine provinces of Corrientes and Messianes. The northern part of the state lies on the southern slopes of the elevated plateau extending southward from Sao Paulo across the states of Paraná and Santa Catarina, and is much broken by low mountain ranges, whose general direction across the trend of the slope gives them the appearance of escarpments. A range of low mountains extends southward from the Serra do Mar of Santa Catarina and crosses the state into Uruguay. West of this range is a vast grassy plain devoted principally to stock raising the northern and most elevated part being suitable in pasturage and climate for sheep, and the southern for cattle. East of it is a wide coastal zone only slightly elevated above the sea, within it are two great estuarine lagoons, the Lago Adas Patos. The coast is one great sand beach, broken only by the outlet of the two lakes called the Rio Grande, which affords an entrance to navigable inland waters and several ports. There are two distinct river systems in Rio Grande do Sul, that of the eastern slope draining to the lagoons, and that of the Rio de la Plata basin draining westward to the Uruguay River. The larger rivers of the eastern group are the Jacui, Sinos, Cai, Gravitai, and Camaquo, which flow into the Lago Adas Patos, and the Jagarel, which flows into the Lago Amiran. All of the first named, except the Camaquo, discharge into one of the two arms or estuaries opening into the northern end of Lago Adas Patos, which is called the Guaiba River, though technically it is not a river but a lake. The Guaiba River is broad comparatively deep and about 56 kilometers, 35 mile long, and with the rivers discharging into it affords upwards of 320 kilometers, 200 mile fluvial navigation. The Jacui is one of the most important rivers of the state, rising in the ranges of the Coxilha Grande of the north and flowing south and southeast to the Guaiba estuary, with a course of nearly 480 kilometers, 300 mile, it has two large tributaries, the Vekakai from the south and the Takwari from the north, and many small streams. The Jagarel, which forms part of the boundary line with Uruguay, is navigable 42 km up to and beyond the town of Jagarel. In addition to the Lago Adas Patos and Lago Miram, there are a number of small lakes on the sandy, swampy peninsulas that lie between the coast and these two, and there are others of a similar character along the northern coast. The largest lake is the Lago Adas Patos Lake of the Patos, an Indian tribe inhabiting its shores at the time of European discovery, which lies parallel with the coastline, northeast and southwest, and is about 214 kilometers, 
133 my long exclusive of the two arms at its northern end 4058 km long respectively and of its its width varies from 35 to 58 km the lake is comparatively shallow and filled with sand banks making its navigable channels tortuous and difficult the lago Amiram occupies a similar position farther south on the uruguayan border and is about 175 kilometers 109 mile long by 10 to 35 km wide it is more irregular in outline and discharges into lago Adas patos through a navigable channel known as the sao goncalo channel a part of the lake lies in uruguayan territory but its navigation as determined by treaty belongs exclusively to brazil both of these lakes are evidently the remains of an ancient depression in the coastline shut in by sand beaches built up by the combined action of wind and current they are of the same level as the ocean but their waters are affected by the tides and are brackish only a short distance above the rio grande outlet fully one-third of the state belongs to the rio de la plata drainage basin of the many streams flowing northward and westward to the uruguay the largest are the Ijui of the Plata region, the Ibicui, which has its source near Santa Maria in the central part of the state and flows westward to the Uruguay a short distance above Uruguayana, and the Quara River, which forms part of the boundary line with Uruguay. The Uruguay River itself is formed by the confluence of the Canoas and Pelotas rivers. The Pelotas, which has its source in the Serra do Mar on the Atlantic coast, and the Uruguay River forms the northern and western boundary line of the state down to the mouth of the Quarai on the Uruguayan frontier. Climate Rio Grande do Sul lies within the south temperate zone and is predominantly humid subtropical CFA according to the Köppen climate classification. The climate is subtropical highland CFB in the highest areas. There are four relatively well-defined seasons and rainfall is well distributed throughout the year but occasional droughts can occur. The winter months, June to September, are characterized by heavy rains and by a cold southwesterly wind called Menuano, which sometimes lowers the temperature to below freezing, especially in the mountainous municipalities where snowfalls can occur. The lowest official temperature registered in the state was 9.8 deg, C14 deg F in Bom Jesus, on August 1, 1955. In summer, the temperature rises to 37 deg C 99 deg F, and heat-related injuries are not uncommon. Accordions, accordions, several accordions cover portions of the state. In the northeastern corner of the state, between the Serra do Mar slash Serra Jural and the Atlantic, lies the southern extension of the Serra do Mar coastal forests, a belt of evergreen tropical moist forests that extend north along the coastal strip as far as Rio de Janeiro State. The high plateau behind the Serra do Mar is occupied by the Aracaria Moist Forest, a subtropical forest characterized by evergreen, laurel-leaved forests interspersed with emergent Brazilian pines Aracaria angustifolia. The Alto Parana Atlantic forests lie on the lower slopes of the plateau south and east of the Aracaria forests, including much of the lower basin of the Jacuí and its tributaries. These forests are semi-deciduous with many trees losing their leaves in the winter dry season. The Atlantic Coast Restingas, distinctive forests which grow on nutrient-poor coastal dunes, extend along the coast as far as the Uruguayan border. The southeastern portion of the state is covered by the Pampas, which extends south into Uruguay in a plateau named Serras de Sudest southeastern mountain ranges. History during the Brazilian colonial period, the province of South Rio Grande was the scene of small wars and border skirmishes between Portugal and Spain for the region, the Sacramento colony, and the Guarani missions. It was also a focal point for internal rebellions in the 19th and the early 20th centuries. Guarani Wars According to the Treaty of Tordesillas, the region was to be part of the Spanish possessions in South America. However, the Spanish were much more interested in the Pacific coast, where gold, even in the Atlantic coast, their attention was on the River Plate, where they built the seaport of Buenos Aires on its right bank. Consequently, 
Spanish settlement followed the course of the River Plate and its tributaries, especially the Parana and Uruguay rivers, largely ignoring the Rio Grande do Sul area. The Spanish introduced livestock, which escaped into the plains and attracted gauchos to the area. The first Spanish to settle in the region that is now Paraguay, northwestern Argentina, Corrientes, Messianese, and Rio Grande do Sul were Jesuit missionary priests who came with the idea of converting the indigenous population to Catholic Christianity. To that end, they founded missionary villages known in Spanish as Messianese or Reduxians, populated by Garani Indians. In the early 17th century, the Jesuits founded missions to the east of the Uruguay River and in the northwest of modern Rio Grande do Sul. The missions were destroyed and their Garani inhabitants were enslaved in large raids by Bandarants between 1636 and 1638, however, in 1687, the Jesuits were back in the region, having refounded seven reductions, the Messianese Orientales. The region remained under Spanish sovereignty, though in practice the Jesuits operated quite independently up to the late 17th century. But in 1680, the Portuguese founded Colonia do Sacramento on the northern bank of the River Plate in what is now Uruguay. War ensued and was intermittent until the independence of Uruguay in 1828. The logistics of defending Colonia against the Spanish resulted in a government effort to settle Rio Grande do Sul's coastal region with Brazilian and Portuguese colonists. In 1737, a fortified village, today the city of Rio Grande, was built at the entrance of Lagoa das Patos. In 1752, a group of Azorian settlers founded Porto Alegre. To the west, Rio Pardo was also founded. Towards the middle of the century, Brazilians and Portuguese arrived to the west of the region, clashing with the Jesuits and the Garonese. Up to 1756, the Garonese fought back under the leadership of Sip Tairaju, who was popularly canonized as São Sip Saint Sip. However, the Portuguese and Brazilians eventually crushed the resistance, destroyed the missions, and the region came definitely into Portuguese hegemony. In 1738, the territory which included the present state of Santa Catarina became the Capitania del Rey and was made a dependency of Rio de Janeiro. Territorial disputes between Spain and Portugal led to the occupation by the Spaniards of the town of Rio Grande then the capital of the Capitania and neighboring districts from 1763 to 1770. The capture of Rio Grande in 1763 caused the removal of the seat of government to Viamau at the head of Lagoa dos Patos. In 1773, Porto dos Cazes, renamed Porto Alegre, became the capital. These historic acts were planned and directed by Manuel Sepulveda, who used the fictitious name or pseudonym José Marcelino de Figueiredo to hide his identity. In 1801, news of war between Spain and Portugal led to the capture of the Sip Povos and some frontier posts. In 1777, the Santo Ildefonso Treaty granted the coastal region to Portugal and the Missos to Spain, but in practice, both regions were populated by Portuguese and Brazilian settlers. In 1801, the Badajoz Treaty handed the Messianese Missos to the Portuguese. Only the borders between modern Uruguay and Rio Grande do Sul remained in dispute. Cisplatine War The districts of Santa Catarina and Rio Grande had been separated in 1760 for military convenience, and in 1807, the latter was elevated to the category of a Capitania, Jural, with the designation of São Pedro do Rio Grande, independent of Rio de Janeiro, and with Santa Catarina as a dependency. In 1812, Rio Grande and Santa Catarina were organized into two distinct comarcas, the latter becoming an independent province in 1822 when the Empire of Brazil was organized. In 1816, the Portuguese captured Uruguay, which became a province of Brazil Provincia Cisplatina. This situation outlasted Brazil's independence from Portugal in 1822. In 1825, however, Juan Antonio Lavalleja proclaimed the independence of Uruguay or followed, until in 1828, 
Brazil recognized Uruguayan independence. Farapilha Revolution Populating Rio Grande do Sul was a constant concern of the Portuguese. To that end, the Metropolitan Crown distributed land in the form of enormous latifundi. In those large latifundia, cattle raising was the predominant economic activity. Figaranis, under Jesuit rule, had started raising cattle in the Missos. The destruction of the Missos left astray immense herds, which went feral. Thus the newcomers from Sao Paulo and Santa Catarina settled by re-domesticating these feral herds, called godos of crow. The Azorian settlers, on the other hand, mainly introduced wheat crops in much smaller properties. Up to the beginning of the 19th century, wheat was the main export product of Rio Grande do Sul. However, the introduction of charquitas in the southern coast, following the 1777 drought in Sierra, opened new opportunities to husbandry, as from them on, instead of moving herds by land to Sao Paulo, cattle could be sold in the relatively nearby region of Pelotas to be slaughtered and processed there, and further transported by sea to Santo. The cheap jerky was commonly used as food for the enslaved laborers in other parts of Brazil. Up to 1830, political unrest in Argentina and Uruguay favored the jerky producers of Pelotas. But with order restored in these countries, competition by Argentinian and Uruguayan jerky producers became a concern. The jerky industry of the Plata was favored by the superior quality of Argentinian and Uruguayan pastures, by their better seaports, and by their use of free labor instead of slavery. Consequently, the regional elites soon started to demand customs protection for the gaucho jerky against the product of the Rio de la Plata. On the failure of the imperial government to address those concerns, political demands of greater autonomy and ideas of a federal relationship towards the rest of Brazil were put forth. These escalated into full rebellion in 1835. In 1834, the imperial government issued an auto additional, allowing for elected provincial legislative assemblies. The first Gaucha Legislative Assembly, inaugurated in April 1835, quickly confronted the provincial president appointed by the regency on behalf of the emperor, who was a minor. Rebellion broke out in the province on September 20, 1835, giving up hope of redress of the situation by the imperial government. The Gauchos proclaimed independence of the Rio Grandes Republic on September 11, 1836. The ensuing Farapilha revolution, known locally as Guerra dos Farapos, lasted ten years. The rebels stormed Porto Alegre, but were driven out from there in June 1836. From then on, the empire was able to control most of the coastal region, achieving decisive strategic advantage from this. However, in 1839, the rebels were still able to invade Santa Catarina, where they proclaimed a Juliana Republic in a federal relationship with Rio Grande do Sul during the Santa Catarina campaign, Giusep Garibaldi joined the rebels for a while before he returned to Europe and eventually became a hero in his native Italy. The empire soon retook initiative, though, and from them on the rebels fought in the defensive. In 1842, the empire assigned a new provincial governor and military commander, the baron, later Duke of Caxias. The inability of the rebels to secure contact with the world through a seaport the dwindling economy of the province, combined with Caxias' superior capabilities as military commander. Economically exhausted and militarily defeated, the rebels accepted Caxias' terms of surrender. A general amnesty was declared. The rebellious officials were incorporated into the imperial army. Slaves enrolled in the rebel army were freed. Additionally, the empire imposed a 25% tax on foreign jerky imports. The province suffered greatly in the struggle, but recovered quickly, not only due to the import tax protection, but mainly due to renewed instability in Argentina and Uruguay. Conflicts with neighboring countries At mid-19th century, Rio Grande do Sul was repeatedly involved in war between Brazil and its neighbors. Those included war against Argentina and Uruguay deposal of Juan Manuel Rosas, Argentinian dictator, 
and Manuel Seferino Oribe y Viena, Uruguayan President, 1852, and Intervention in Uruguay Deposal of Atanasio Cruz Aguera, 1864. This, in turn, led to Paraguayan Intervention and the Paraguayan War, known in Portuguese as Guerra do Paraguay. In the war against Rosas, 75% of the Brazilian troops were gauchos. As the only Brazilian boundaries actually facing foreign armies able to project the empire's power, Rio Grande do Sul and its gauchos quickly developed a reputation as soldiers. Paraguayan War During this long and bloody war against Paraguay, Rio Grande do Sul remained usually a secondary front. But in 1865, a Paraguayan division invaded the state, occupying Uruguayana by August 5. By August 16, troops of the Triple Alliance put siege to Uruguayana, and by September 17, an ultimatum was delivered to General Estegaribia, commander of the Paraguayan division. Having no possibility of breaking the siege or defending the position, the Paraguayans surrendered under conditions the following day. But if the territory of Rio Grande do Sul was spared most action, its dwellers provided a very significant part of the Brazilian troops, about 34,000 soldiers, more than 25% of the Brazilian army. This military characteristic of Rio Grande do Sul lasted long after the Paraguayan War in 1879, of a standing army of less than 15,000, more than 5,000 were in Rio Grande do Sul. On the other hand, during the late empire, more Brazilian generals were from Rio Grande do Sul than from any other province. In 1889, of 25 generals born in Brazil, four were from Rio Grande do Sul, and of the three born abroad, two were born in Uruguay but made their careers in Rio Grande do Sul. Late Empire Political agitation was frequent in Rio Grande do Sul, but no important revolution occurred after the Ponch Verde Treaty in 1845 until the presidency at Rio de Janeiro of General Floriano Peixoto, whose ill-considered interference with state governments led to the revolt of 1892-94 under Gumercindo Sareba. After the Paraguayan War, Rio Grande do Sul underwent important changes in its economy. Railways connected the countryside to Porto Alegre and Rio Grande together with the introduction of steamships. This reduced the costs and duration of transportation, facilitating the province's exports. New cattle breeds were introduced, and barbed wire was used to demarcate properties. As a consequence, the population of the province doubled between 1872 and 1890, from 434,000 813 inhabitants to 897,455. This was partly due to immigration, about 60,000 immigrants, mostly from Italy, and in lesser numbers, from Germany, came to Rio Grande do Sul during this period. Most of the Italians settled in the Saragotcha, and most of the Germans in the valleys of the Jacui, Sinos and Kai as small landed proprietors and agricultural producers. In the area of German settlements, a messianic movement, the Muckers German for False Saints erupted in 1874 and was smashed by the Brazilian army. Also during this period, the Liberal Party established its hegemony over the province, meaning control of the provincial legislature, the National Guard in Rio Grande do Sul, and most of the municipal governments. Before the War of the Triple Alliance, the conservative and liberal parties had alternated in local power following the national tendency. But from 1872 on, the liberals, under the leadership of Gaspar Silvera Martins, were able to retain provincial power, even when the conservatives won at national level. 1893 Revolution In this struggle, the revolutionaries occupied Santa Catarina and Paraná, capturing Curitiba but were eventually overthrown through their inability to obtain munitions of war. An incident in this struggle was the death of Admiral Saldanha da Gama, one of the most brilliant officers of the Brazilian Navy and one of the chiefs of the Naval Revolt of 1893-94, who was killed in a skirmish on the Uruguayan border towards the end of the conflict. 
1923 Revolution. In 1923, civil war again exploded between supporters of state president Borges de Medeiros and opposition linked to the Partido Libertador and Assis Brassel. 1930 Revolution. In 1930, state president Getulio Vargas, after unsuccessfully running in the presidential elections against the candidate of Sao Paulo, Julio Prests led a revolt against the federal government and succeeded in overthrowing it. This eventually led to the Vargas dictatorship in 1937 and the period known as the Estado Novo. What is now the Rio Grande do Sul military brigade fought on the side of the state leadership and, as a result, was never reformed. In fact, the brigade remains the only state militia in Brazil. The military police is the federal force that polices in the other states. A poignant example of the brigade's quasi-autonomy is the participation of its servicemen in both the coup attempt of 1961 and the military coup in 1964. Demographics According to the IBJ of 2008, there were 10 million 860,000 people residing in the state. The population density was 38.53 inhabitants per square kilometer, 99.8 slash SQMI. Urbanization, 81%, 2004. Population growth, 1.2%, 1991-2000 houses. The last PNED national research for sample of domiciles counted 8 million, 776,000 white people, 81%, 1,495,000 brown multiracial people, 14%, 529,000 black people, 5%, 43,000 Amerindian people, 0.4%. According to a genetic study from 2013, Brazilians in Rio Grande do Sul have an average of 73% European, 14% African and 13% Amerindian ancestry. Ethnic groups People of Portuguese, mostly Azorean background, predominate in the coastal region. The southwest, on the other hand, was originally populated by Pampino Indians. Like the other Gauchos from the La Plata Basin, the population, these theoretical speculations about Spanish predominance among the population of southwestern Rio Grande do Sul are widely presumed, but they contradict the historical and modern genetic knowledge about the region. In fact, there was always some Spanish colonial presence there, however in practice restricted to Jesuit religious initiatives towards the Amerindian populations, which had limited genetic impact in the demographic composition of Aboriginal populations. On the other hand, it is broadly accepted that it is northern Uruguay that always has had an important Luso-Brazilian influence which in fact impacts to this day the mixed Spanish-Portuguese language of northern Uruguay along the border with Brazil borderlands. People of German descent predominate in the Sinos Valley Novo Hamburgo, São Leopoldo, Nova Hartz, Doiser Maus, Moro Reuter, etc., and in the center-eastern part of the state Santa Cruz do Sol. People of Italian descent predominate in the mountains Saragacha, Caxias do Sol, Bento Goncalves, Farapilha, Garibaldi, etc. The northern and northwestern parts of the state also have significant numbers of people of both Italian and German descent. There are sizable communities of Poles and Ukrainians across the state, notably in the northwest. People of African ancestry are concentrated in the capital city and in some cities in the littoral, such as Pelotas and Rio Grande. According to Argentine demographer Miel Angel Garcia, Italian immigrants were 60% of the total immigration to Rio Grande do Sul, and according to French historian Jean Roch, as of 1950, people of German descent made up 21.6% of the state's poo. Pay. The region that is now Rio Grande do Sul was originally settled by Amerindian peoples, mostly Garani and Kaingangs. European presence in the region started in 1627 with Spanish Jesuits. The Jesuits established Indian reductions in the region. Those reductions were populated exclusively by Amerindians, mainly Garani and certainly not by Europeans, either Spanish or Portuguese. 
Portuguese Jesuits established Indian reductions in 1687 and dominated the region. Most of the Indians of the region became Catholics and went to live among the Jesuits. These reductions were destroyed by the Bandeirantes from Sao Paulo in the 18th century, who wanted to enslave the Indians. The Portuguese settlement in Rio Grande do Sul was largely increased between 1748 and 1756, with the arrival of 2,000 immigrants from the Azores Islands, Portugal. They settled many parts of the state, including the nowadays capital, Porto Alegre. Blacks were 50% of Rio Grande do Sul's population in 1822. This proportion decreased to 25% in 1858 and to only 5.2% in 2005. Most of them were brought from Angola to work as slaves in the Charquitas. German immigrants first arrived to southern Brazil in 1824. They were attracted to Brazil to protect the country from invasions of the neighboring countries and to populate the empty interior of the southern region. The first city to be settled by them was São Leopoldo. In the next five decades, around 28,000 Germans were brought to the region to work as small farmers in the countryside. Italian immigrants started arriving in Rio Grande do Sul in 1875. They were mostly poor peasants from Trentino and Veneto, northern Italy, who were attracted to southern Brazil to get their own farms. Italian immigration to the region lasted until 1914, with a total of 100,000 Italians settling there in this period. Most of the immigrants worked as small farmers, mainly cultivating grapes in the Saragotcha part of the state. Other European immigrants migrated to Rio Grande do Sul, mostly from Eastern Europe. The Jewish Colonization Association assisted Russian Jewish immigrants to settle on agricultural land in the state. A memoir of one such immigrant community, Philipson Memorias da Primeira Colonia Judaica no Rio Grande do Sul Philipson, Memories of the First Jewish Colony in Rio Grande do Sul, was published by Frida Alexander in 1967. European genomic ancestry predominates throughout Brazil at 80%, except for the southern region, which includes Rio Grande do Sul, where it reaches 90%. A new portrayal of each ethnicity contribution to the DNA of Brazilians obtained with samples from the five regions of the country has indicated that, on average, European ancestors are responsible for nearly 80% of the genetic heritage of the population. The variation between the regions is small, with the possible exception of the South, where the European country... As of 2013, there were fewer than 30,000 Nisai in Rio Grande do Sul. Japanese immigrant families from Sao Paulo State began arriving in Rio Grande do Sul in the 1930s. In 1956, the first 23 official immigrants came to the state, and 26 families arrived at Rio Grande in the years from 1956 through 1963. In 2013, Peter B. Clark, author of Japanese New Religions in Global Perspective, wrote that nowadays we cannot speak of a Japanese colony in RS. Largest Cities Religion According to the 2010 Brazilian census, most of the population, 68.8%, is Roman Catholic. Other religious groups include Protestants or Evangelicals, 18.3%, Spiritists, 0.8%, Nuns, 5.3%, and people with other religions, 4.4%. Economy The industrial sector is the largest component of GDP at 43%, followed by the service sector at 41%. Agriculture represents 16% of GDP 2004. Rio Grande do Sul exports footwear 18%, soybeans 14%, tobacco 13.6%, vehicles 8%, frozen meat 7.2%, chemicals 6.8%, and leather 5% 2002. Share of the Brazilian economy 7% 2005. One of the most prosperous Brazilian states, Rio Grande do Sul, is known especially for its grain production, viticulture, ranching, and for its considerable industrial output. In 1827, 
emigrants from Eider Oberstein discovered the world's most important agate deposit in Rio Grande do Sul. As early as 1834, the first delivery of agate from Rio Grande do Sul had been made to Eider Oberstein. The Brazilian agate exhibited very even layers, much more even than those seen in the local agates. This made them especially good for making engraved gems. In agriculture, the state stands out in the production of soybeans, maize, wheat, rice, tobacco, grape, apple, cassava, and yerba mate, in addition to also producing oat, barley, orange, peach, fig, tangerine, persimmon, and strawberry. In 2020, the South region produced 32% of the national total of cereals, vegetables, and oilseeds. There were 77.2 million tons, second place in Brazil, losing only to the Midwest. Rio Grande do Sul 14.3% was the third largest producer in the country. Rio Grande do Sul is the largest producer of rice in the country, with 70.5% of Brazil's production, close to 7.3 million tons in 2020. It is also the largest producer of tobacco in Brazil, and is the largest exporter in the world. Brazil is the second largest producer in the world and leader in tobacco exports since the 1990s, with 98% of Brazilian production being carried out in the South region. The state is responsible for 90% of the national production of grapes, and produces 90% of the wine produced in the country, 85% of the sparkling wine, and 90% of the grape juice mainly in the area of Caxias do Sul and surroundings, 664.2 thousand tons of grape in 2018. In soy, Rio Grande do Sul is the third largest producer in the country, with about 16% of national production. It produced 19.3 million tons. In 2017, it was also third largest producer of maize. Rio Grande do Sul is also the largest national producer of wheat, with 2.3 million tons in 2019. The South region is also the largest producer of oats in Brazil. In 2019, national production was close to 800,000 tons, being almost all carried out in the South Paraná and Rio Grande do Sul. The three southern states of the country are responsible for 95% of the national production of apple, and Santa Catarina appears at the top of the production list, disputing with Rio Grande do Sul. Rio Grande do Sul harvests 45% of Brazilian apples and is the largest exporter of apples in the country. The region in the vicinity of Vake area is the highlight. It concentrates 88% of the state's production and 37% of the national production. In cassava production, Brazil produced a total of 17.6 million tons in 2018. The state was the fourth largest producer in the country, with almost one million tons. About Orange, Rio Grande do Sul, was the fifth largest producer in Brazil in 2018, with a total of 367,000 tons. Rio Grande do Sul is the largest producer of peaches in Brazil, with half the volume harvested in Brazil in 2018. It is also the largest producer of fig in the country, according to data from 2018. In 2018, Rio Grande do Sul was the third largest producer of tangerine in Brazil. Rio Grande do Sul is also responsible for 19% of Brazil's persimmon production, being the second largest national producer. In 2019, in Brazil, there was a total production area of around 4,000 hectares of strawberry. Rio Grande do Sul was the third largest producer. In 2019, Brazil produced about 900,000 tons of yerba mate annually. Paraná is the largest producer in volume and Rio Grande do Sul in plantation areas and where the sector is more industrialized. According to 2017 data, Paraná harvested 301,000 tons of yerba mate by extractive method, while Rio Grande do Sul harvested 17,000 tons. On the other hand, while the Gauchos harvested 302,000 tons of planted grass, the Parana harvested 237. The productive potential of yerba mate is still little explored in Brazil, with a good part of the harvest carried out by the extractive system and with low levels of productivity. 
However, many new producers are adopting more professional and efficient production systems with technical acuity of management and globalized market vision. This tends to increase Brazil's export of this product. In 2018, the state's cattle herd was 12.5 million head, seventh place in the country, 6.5% of Brazil's cattle herd. In 2019, Rio Grande do Sul produced a total of 4.5 billion liters of milk, making it the third largest producer in the country, with 13.0% of the country's total. In sheep farming in 2017, the South region was the second largest in the country, with 4.2 million heads. Rio Grande do Sul has 94% of the country's wool production. In pork, the three southern states are the largest producers in the country. Brazil had 41.1 million head in 2017. Rio Grande do Sul 14.6% is the third largest producer. The Brazilian poultry flock in 2018 was of the order of 1.5 billion heads. In 2017, the main poultry producing states in Brazil were Paraná 25.3%, Sao Paulo 14.0% and Rio Grande do Sul 11.0%. In terms of chickens, in 2017 there were 242.8 million heads in the country. Among the states that were the largest producers, Sao Paulo led with 21.9%, followed by Paraná 10.1% and Rio Grande do Sul 8.8%. In the production of chicken eggs, the state ranks fifth in Brazil, with 8% of national production. There were 354 million dozen in 2018. The South region was the main producer of honey in the country in 2017, accounting for 39.7% of the national total. Rio Grande do Sul was the largest producer in the country, with 15.2%. Regarding mining, the state is a major producer of gemstones. Brazil is the world's largest producer of amethyst and agate, and Rio Grande do Sul is the largest producer in the country. Agate has local extraction since 1830. The largest producer of amethyst in Brazil is the city of Amethysta do Sul. This stone was very rare and expensive worldwide until the discovery of large deposits in Brazil, causing its value to drop considerably. There is also some jasper and opal in the state. About industry, Rio Grande do Sul had an industrial GDP of $2.01 billion in 2017, equivalent to 6.9% of the national industry. It employs 762,045 workers in the industry. The main industrial sectors are construction 18.2%, food 15.4%, industrial public utility services, such as electricity and water 9.8%, chemicals 6.8%, and machinery and equipment 6.6%. These five sectors concentrate 56.8% of the state's industry. In the automotive sector, the state has a GM plant. The leather footwear sector footwear industry stands out particularly in Novo Hamburgo, Sapiranga, and Campo Baum and in virtually all other municipalities in Vale dos Sinos. In 2019, Brazil produced 972 million pairs. Exports were around 10%, reaching almost 125 million pairs. Brazil is in the fourth position among the world producers, behind China, who produces more than 10 billion pairs, India and Vietnam, and in 11th place among the biggest exporters. The largest pole of production in Brazil is located here. The Brazilian state that most exports the product is Rio Grande do Sul. In 2019, it exported U.S. $448.35 million. The majority of the product goes to United States, Argentina, and France. Domestic consumption absorbs a large part of production. The state has or created some of the most important factories in Brazil in the sector. In food industry, in 2019, Brazil was the second largest exporter of processed foods in the world, with a value of U34 dollars, one cent billion in exports. The Brazilian food and beverage industry's revenue in 2019 was our 699 dollars, nine cents billion. 
9.7% of the country's gross domestic product. In 2015, the industrial food and beverage sector in Brazil comprised 34,800 companies not counting bakeries, the vast majority of which were small. These companies employed more than 1,600,000 workers, making the food and beverage industry the largest employer in the manufacturing industry. There are around 570 large companies in Brazil, which concentrate a good part of the total industry revenue. Rio Grande do Sul created food companies of national importance, such as the Nujabar Chocolate Factory, Vinicola Aurora, and Vinicola Sultan, two of the largest wineries in the country, and Camel Alimentos, which owns the brand Acucar Unia, the most famous sugar brand in the country, Aras Caratero, one of the most famous rice brands in Brazil, among others. The mechanical and metallurgical industry also reach considerable expression especially in Porto Alegre, Novo Hamburgo, São Leopoldo and Canoas, in addition to Gravitai, Sapuque do Sul, Esteo and Sapiranga, which have large companies in the sector and which also belong to the metropolitan region of Porto Alegre. These centers are joined by São Jerônimo, which houses the Charquitas steel plant. The steel mill Acos Finos Piratini is located in Charquitas, which belongs to Jurdao. It is geared mainly to serve the automotive industry. In the metallurgical business, the state has one of the most famous companies in the country, Tramontina, originally from Rio Grande do Sul and famous manufacturer of knives, pans, shovels, and various utensils, which has more than 8,500 employees and 10 manufacturing units. Other famous companies in the state are Marco Polo, a manufacturer of bus bodies, which had a market value of our two dollars seven hundred eighty two cents billion in twenty fifteen and Randon, a group of nine companies specialized in solutions for the transportation, which brings together manufacturers of vehicles, auto parts, and road equipment employs around eleven thousand. Another industrial area is the so called old colonization region, in which the municipalities of Caxias do Sol, Garibaldi, Bento Goncalves, Flores da Cunha, Ferropilha, and Santa Cruz do Sol are integrated. The manufacturing activity is marked by the production of wine and processing of agripastoral products, such as leather, lard, maize, wheat, and tobacco. In the rest of the state there are several dispersed industrial centers, all linked to the processing of agripastoral raw materials. In this group, Erechim, Paso Fundo, Santa Maria, Santana do Livramento, Rosario do Sol, Pelotas, Rio Grande, and Beige stand out. Statistics Vehicles 4,367,980 March 2008 and 8,008. Mobile phones 12.3 million June 2008. Telephones 3 million April 2008. Cities 496 2007 Education There are more than 100 universities in the state. The largest public university is Offix, and the largest private one is Puckers. Infrastructure International airports Porto Alegre With 37.6 thousand square meters of constructed area and four levels, the passenger terminal at Salgado Filho International Airport can receive 28 large airplanes simultaneously. The terminal has 32 check-in counters, 10 boarding bridges, 9 elevators, and 10 escalators. It has a totally automated aircraft movement control center, and the main spaces are air-conditioned. The apron, surfaced with pressed concrete, can serve jumbo jets like the Boeing 747-400. The garage structure has eight levels, 44,000 square meters, and 1440 parking spaces. Another terminal, with 15,000 square meters and capacity for 1.5 million passengers a year, serves general, executive, and third-tier aviation conventional piston engine and turboprop planes. Porto Alegre Airport was the first one administered by Infraero to have integrated check-in. This service offers flexibility in use of terminal facilities and installations, 
enabling carriers to access their own data centers via shared use computers from any check in counter position. This makes it much easier to allocate counter space according to demand fluctuations, making for less idle space. The Aero Shopping Area, a center for commerce and leisure, operates 24 hours a day with shops, services, a food court, along with a triplex cinema, the first to be established at a Brazilian airport. Salgado Filho International Airport also has an air cargo terminal, built in 1974, with 9,500,000 square meters of area and capacity to handle 1,500 tons of export cargo and 900 tons of imports each month. The average daily movement arrivals and departures is 174 aircraft, flying scheduled routes connecting Porto Alegre directly or indirectly to all the country's other major cities, as well as smaller cities in the interior of the states of the South Region and Sao Paulo. There are also international flights with direct connections to cities of the Southern Cone. Pelotas The Pelotas International Airport is commonly used by the Brazilian Air Force as the last stop in Brazil on its flights to the Brazilian Antarctic base. Beige Commandant Gustavo Kremer Airport opened on July 5, 1946. This airport came under Infrero administration on October 27, 1980. It is located on the rural outskirts of Beige, 60 km 37 mi from the Uruguayan border, and 380 km 236 mi from Porto Alegre. Commandant Gustavo Kremer Airport does not operate with scheduled commercial flights. There are two daily flights carrying bank pouches, as well as air taxi services and executive jets. Most of the airport's users are business people from the central part of Brazil who have interests in the region in breeding thoroughbred English and Arabian, horses, cattle ranching, fruit growing, wine making, wood pulp and power generation. Uruguayana, Guayana Located on the border with Argentina across the Uruguay River from the Argentine city of Paso de los Libres, Uruguayana is considered the major inland port in Latin America, thanks to its strategic position with the countries of Mercosur. Rubemberta International Airport, however, has only one flight, on Azul Brazilian Airlines, to Porto Alegre, a situation in Freiro intends to change, as was confirmed in an official visit to the airport in December 2004. With more than 700,000 square meters of constructed area, it is the largest airport in the interior of the state of Rio Grande do Sul. There are two highways, BR-290 and BR-472, running near the airport, besides a railroad line about 2,500 meters from the terminal. Located 9 km 6 miles from the city center, this airport is at an elevation of 78 meters. Located 630 km 391 miles from the state capital Porto Alegre, Uruguayana was founded on May 29, 1746, and has a current population of 126,936. Farming and ranching are the main economic activities of the region which has 1509 rural properties. National Airports Caxias do Sol Highways Highways The Arminus 101 The Arminus 116 The Arminus 285 The Arminus 290 The Arminus 386 The Arminus 392 Culture the state of Rio Grande do Sul is renowned as one of the most culturally rich states of Brazil. Rio Grande's music is a blend of many styles, most a continuum of rhythms found in neighboring countries, including the chaming, milonga. Modern gaucho music, or tichi music, has been popular since the late 1980s. The inhabitants of the state are known in the country for drinking chimarral, a local version of the mate drunk in neighboring Uruguay and Argentina and for consuming churrasco very regularly, a practice common due to the abundant sources of high-quality meat, even going so far as considering this one of the most important elements of everyday life. Porto Alegre is home to Sport Club International and Gremio Football Porto Alegrense.
They are arch rivals, one of the biggest rivalries in Brazil. Each region of the state has its own cultural background. In the Pampas Southwest, the culture is still largely influenced by the old gauchos. Gaucho is a term that can describe anyone born in the state of Rio Grande do Sul. However, it is also used to describe the 19th century rural workers of the region. Other parts of the state have a slightly different culture, influenced mainly by German or Italian immigrants. After some generations, the descendants of immigrants were integrated in the local society, even though their cultural influences are still strong, mostly in the countryside. Despite these differences, the Gaucho people maintain a particular zeal for their culture and its variations. Although the Gaucho culture and its Portuguese-based language prevails in Rio Grande do Sul, the southernmost state of Brazil, sharing many of its folklore characteristics with neighboring horseback, livestock raising, grassland-centered cultures, such as found in Uruguay and in Argentina, the state also has other strong, albeit less prominent, cultural folk. These are notably the German-Brazilian cultural identity and the Riograndinser Hunsrikish language. The estimated number of speakers are around 1,500,000 spoken in the state since 1824. It received official recognition by the State House of Representatives in 2012 by unanimous vote. Also, as the result of European immigration stated in the 19th century, the state has an Italian culture and language of its own, the Italian language of Veneto-based language slash dialect, spoken mostly in the Highlands region, at the so-called Old Italian colonies in the upper state, see Italian Brazilian. However, there are many other much smaller cultural minorities in the state, for example, the Afro-Brazilian community, the Garoni and Kaingang indigenous peoples, also Pomeranian, Polish, German, Jewish, etc. However, these three are the predominant cultural expressions found in the state, each with living linguistic expressions which attest to their existence. Language As in all Brazil, Portuguese is the main spoken language. A few expressions of Spanish origin are common such as gracias instead of abrigado or the vocative tichi, etc. Due to the proximity with Argentina, and Uruguay and their common gaucho past. Also, a few words of German origin, particularly referring to cuisine, have entered the vocabulary, such as chimia from schmier and cuca from kuchen. Words of Garani language origin also make up the vocabulary, an example being the largely used word guri, meaning boy. The gauchos are also famous by their use of the pronoun tu instead of vos, the latter being the formal second person singular noun and the first being the informal noun equivalent. In the traditional gaucho dialect of the Pampas, the verb is conjugated correctly in the second person singular, just like the European Portuguese two cantas, two baits, two parts, two pos. In the colloquial Portuguese of Porto Alegre, however, the verb is conjugated in the second person as in the third person two canta, two bait, two part, two po. Gaucho Portuguese Phonology Phonemes of Porto Alegrense Portuguese Although this process is very common in the southeast, in Gaucho Portuguese the letters S and Z are never pronounced as palato alveolar consonants in coda position, e.g. pasto pasture is pasto in Rio de Janeiro, but pasto in Porto Alegre. In Rio Grande do Sul, as in most of Brazil, the letters T and D are pronounced as palato alveolar affricate consonants, when immediately succeeded by the vowel I, a process very similar to Russian palatalization, and which, however, does not happen in the varieties of the pampas. Moreover, the unstressed E and O are often reduced into slash I slash and slash U slash, respectively. Therefore, in Porto Alegre, the unstressed T syllables are pronounced slash TC slash, for example, while in the pampas they are usually pronounced slash TI slash. Porto, Allegor, Antigamet, Slashen, T. Sigamedged, SJ, Slash, or Slashen, T. Sigamet, SJ, Slash, J. Slash, Hash, Hash, J. Slash, J. Slash, Cocho Pampas, Antigamet, Slash, A. T. Sigamet, Slash. Compare Spanish Antiguamet, Slash, Antiguamet, Slash. The dialect of the Pampas, 
had suffered a stronger influence of Spanish language, while the dialect of Porto Alegre suffers modern influences of the southeastern varieties. Also, the vowel nasalization in Porto Alegrense Portuguese is far different from that seen in French, for example. In French, the nasalization extends uniformly through the entire vowel. In Porto Alegre, the nasalization begins almost imperceptibly, and then gets far stronger in the end of the vowel, therefore being closer to the nasalization of Hindi Urdu phonology C. Anasvara. In some cases, the nasal archophoneme actually represents the addition of a nasal consonant, like slash m, n in g, j, w, w, slash. Manta equals slash manta slash, anta slash, anta slash, slash manta slash, anta slash, to slash. Tampa equals slash tampa slash. Anko equals slash ba in GKU slash. U slash, you slash, you slash, you slash, you slash, you slash, and 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 you slash, you slash, you slash, you slash, and you slash, you bem equals slash, bed slash, bed slash, bed slash, slash. Bomb equals slash bow u slash or slash bow w slash or slash bow ng slash g slash g slash g slash ash 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 slash pan equals slash pa w slash or slash pa ng slash. It is also noteworthy that in everyday speech many unstressed vowels are not fully pronounced as they are supposed to be. For example, Talk equals slash talk slash. Med equals slash midged s slash. S slash s slash. Paco equals slash pac u slash. Essentially, the vowels e and i are both reduced and devoiced or completely deleted in word final position, and sometimes also when unstressed and between consonants, always palatalizing the previous consonant. The vowels O and U are also reduced and devoiced to U analogously to what happens in Japanese, see Japanese, more rarely, a may become a, as well. Example. Dom Sevesia, I era o decimo sexto rei de Portugal, e setimo da dinastra de Avis. Uranito du rei Joa Roman three, tornu si herdero du trono de Poa da Mort du siu pai, o principe Joa de Portugal, Duas semanas antes do seu nascimento. E rei com apenas tres anos, em 1557. Do you sebe ser you primer you ira you you sest you hedge desi portugal i sets in you da desenas a desi avis, ira net you de you he iso you terse or you torno you estert or you de you tron. As semanas et sis de you so nasciment you i hedge co apenas tres and usage me kigent, as i see in jiquente, I set si edge vertex i d i sero erder u tie obs. The pronunciation may be subject to free variation. Minority languages. Minority languages spoken in Rio Grande do Sul include indigenous languages Garoni, Kaingang, etc., and European derived languages Talian, Riograndin, and Serhunsrikish, East Pomeranian dialect of Alect of Low German. Yiddish and Polish. Most of the German dialect speakers in southern Brazil spoke or eventually adopted Hunsrakish so that it became the most commonly used German dialect in this part of the world and is still spoken by many people, today also were. In its 180 years of history, Riograndinser Hunsrakish has been influenced by Portuguese and by other German dialects, such as Balksish. Italian is a Brazilian variety of the Venetian language, also often called Veneto for that reason. All minority languages in southern Brazil have experienced a significant degree of decline in the last few decades. Paleontological Tourism Geopark Paleorota is the main area of geotourism in Rio Grande do Sul and one of the most important in Brazil. With 83,000 km2 inside, 281,000 km2 of the state, where many fossils of the Permian and Triassic period, with ages ranging between 210 and 290 million years ago when there was only the continent Pangaea. 
In the region metropolitan Porto Alegre, there are five museums to visit. In Paleo Rota Geopark, there are seven museums, the Paleobotanical Garden in Mata, and the paleontological sites of Santa Maria to be visited. The Biarminus 287, nicknamed Highway of Dinosaurs, crosses 17 of 41 municipalities of the Geopark. Tourism and Recreation